NDS Sports presents Candlepin Stars and Stripes. Featuring the best Candlepin bowlers from all over New England. And now in our 15th season, your host for Candlepin Stars and Strikes, Dick Clark. Hello again, everybody, and welcome in to another edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Moore, and up the ladder we go. We're at the semifinal level of our first ladder series of the 17th season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. It'll be tough to match. Last week's match, we had a thriller. Very, very close. John Zappi averaging 132 the last couple of weeks. He'll need every pin of that because our old friend, a Tournament of Champions winner from 1998. Gary Carrington is back for his first appearance in two and a half years, and it will be a tough go for John. John Zappi last week defeating Bob Whitcomb, 393 to 384, setting up this week's match against the second-seeded Gary Carrington. Let's meet our bowlers this afternoon. First, the winner last week, winner of two matches of the series, John Zappi from Quincy, Massachusetts. Average for John, 124. His high single is 181. High triple 479, and in Dorchester, it's Lucky Strike Lanes. And he'll be taking on a former winner of a Tournament of Champions a couple of years ago from Plasto, New Hampshire, Gary Carrington. Averaging 131, and a fine round of applause. Everybody happy to have Gary back. High single 196, 480 is his high triple, and the Park Place Lanes in Wyndham is where Gary does his league bowling. That sets it up for this afternoon's match. Let's get right to it. It's John Zappi and Gary Carrington. Candlepin Stars and Strikes continues from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. We're back right Right after this on WNDS TV, don't go away. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire. We began with five bowlers at this beginning of the first ladder series of our new 17th season, and in the first week you saw John Zappi beat Rich Lottie. Last week, it was Zappi taking care of number three seed Bob Whitcomb, and that sets up this afternoon's match with John Zappi taking on number two seed Gary Carrington with Steve Plant waiting in the wings to meet the winner. And the winner of that match would advance to the Tournament of Champions. John Zappi will be first to bowl as he steps to lane 34 at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, and we're just about ready to get underway. Right through the head pin. Spread eagle plus one. The 247 on the left, the 36910 on the right. John, the lefty from Quincy, Massachusetts, pulls out of the lucky strike lanes in Dorchester. He starts out with a seven box. John works in sales for Homans Associates in Quincy. They're an HVAC distributor. He is engaged to be married to Leanne Miller on the 15th of December this year and we wish them the best. The uh, average cost of a wedding in the neighborhood of $20,000 these days. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, are you getting married no, again? No, but I have two daughters. Oh, well. Neither of which is about to get married. Yeah, but uh, I have one also and I'm trying to get her into the convent. She's uh, <laughs> been, been resisting that notion all along. Not a bad idea. Well, yours can't go in the convent. You're Jewish, right? That, that isn't going to work. I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> the price is right. <laughs> Convert. <laughs> well, the calls are coming out for Gary Carrington, always a crowd favorite. Winner of the True Value Open uh, at least one occasion. I was actually on hand for that, probably 1989 or 1990. And our very own Tournament of Champions, 1998. Great bowler. We always love having him back. That's a pretty good way to start right there. Yeah, that's what the crowd came to see, Dick. He's on his way to a 300. <laughs> what do we determine? The 245 is the highest sanction single I believe single that is, yes. Candlepin bowling done in western Massachusetts not that long ago, but just recently sanctioned. Yeah, it was done years ago, yeah. and they finally got around to recognizing it officially. <laughs> Gary right on the head pin again. Well, a double dribble, but uh, the results are pretty good. Only the 10 pin to worry about. His friends call him Babe, and that's a nickname given to him by an older brother when they were both toddlers. The spare goes in the strike. And the older brother had trouble saying Baby. It came out Babe, mm -hmm. and the Babe stuck all these years. I would never have guessed that that was the, the source of it, but I heard you asking him where it came from, and uh, that's the story. 
Here's John Zappi now down a couple of marks. And he needs to respond and he throws a good first ball. Will he stay out of the split? Doesn't look like he will. Got the nine and the ten with wood on the deck. This one takes a fine touch. Looks like he's got it. He oh. does not. I thought he had it. Did not get the break. I like the way he threw it at it. He'll take a nine box. What a great match last week, huh? Against uh, Bob Whitcomb. Bob Whitcomb down the stretch in the third game. Uh, well, had the match well in hand, and suddenly uh, things didn't go well for him. And a uh, big finish for uh, John Zappi. Nine pin victory for him last week. Zappi finished with a spare and a strike in his last two boxes and a spare inside the strike. Yeah. So 40 pins in the ninth and tenth frame sealed it for him. And he marks in the fourth frame of the first string his first mark. Here's Gary Carrington. 43 years old, a process engineer for Lucent Technologies. Has two sons. Matt is 17 and Mike is 11. Likes to play golf when he's not bowling. Right on the head pin again. An average of 131, a high single of 196, a high triple for 80. Rolled a 661 in the roll off to earn the number two seed. Behind Steve Plant's 740, which is a remarkable mm -hmm. five string yeah. total. In fact, it's his personal best ever. He lapped the field, as they say. Gary Carrington will not pick up the spear. Thought he had it, but he didn't get it. He had an opportunity for some bonus money, didn't convert it. And that'll be a 10 box for Gary, 47 through the first three. An early 21 pin lead for Gary Carrington, box to box. Again, right on the head pin. He has been all over the head pin. The five pin stands. It wobbles. It was surrounded, but it still stands. Other than the first frame, uh, he has been hitting the uh, head pin off to the side. And that's what you want to do. Keep those splits at bay. Another spare for Gary. Three marks and four boxes. Gary's been on TV more than you, Michael. <laughs> 25 times on Channel 50, 40 times on the old Channel 5 show. Not afraid of the bright lights. John anything Zappi. It, anything that makes him bowl better, I think. John has shown that the lights don't bother him either. And this is only his fourth appearance, fifth appearance now, third week in a row on WNDS. Ooh, Boy, I thought he was going to get a better, yeah. better out than that. No results at all. Well, I don't think you're too worried about the lights when you roll a 400 one week and a 393 the next week. That told me uh, before we started today, he's been very pleased with how he's bowled, as well he should. With an average of 124, he's almost 10 pins over that per game. 132 the last two weeks. A 51 half for Zappi in the first string. Interestingly, both John and Gary write down as their hobbies. They both like to play golf. It's probably the most popular hobby of our all our bowlers collectively. Do you play? No, no, I have enough frustration in my life. Thank you. Question is, when would I play? And that will be a nine box for uh, John Zappi, 60 through six. What about you, you a golfer? I've played a few times this year. Wish I could play more. Mm. Love to play when I can, but just never enough time. Well, you've got to make that money for those two daughters getting married the next few years. <laughs> and a son going to college next year. Yeah, Steve. Steve. Nice young man. Gary Carrington's been all over the head pin. Will the seven pin kick? It will go. The nine pin is still standing. Gary's trying to direct the Deadwood as he stands over the situation. He's trying to well, motion it from one side to the next. <laughs> couldn't be any better. He's got wood all over yeah, it. Yeah, he's got a little V guide to, to bring the ball right in. Should deflect he, it right to yep. it. He's right on it anyway. So he puts a nine in the spare and has another spare. And Gary Carrington opening up an early lead. 
over John Zappi and Gary looking for some bonus money. He has four marks and five boxes, but hasn't been able to put three together. Here's an opportunity for him right here. Again on the head pin, right on the head pin. Well, he may get it. Watch out. Nope, not going to go there, but he's still in good shape to get the spare. Has not left a pin standing yet this game, now in the sixth frame. That will be the spare coming in the back door and $50 in bonus money for Gary Carrington. He has five marks and six boxes and 85 half, and he's working on a spare in the sixth frame. John Zappi threw it right at the head pin, breaks up the split, and leaves the 10 pin standing in the right corner. John with the left-handed delivery moving left to right. Shoots it right at it and threw it right by it. It stayed on the lane, but missed it to the right. Almost impossible to do. And that time he picks up the 10. Tough miss for John right there as he had the spare opportunity. Runner up today, $300 for third place. $50 added by Lita Lanes. So we've uh, pumped up the prize money this year, compliments of our hosting establishment, Ray Simino and Lita Lanes. Ray Simino and Sean Howard and the staff at Lita Lanes do a great job. We've told you so many times about how nicely they take care of the spectators who come. They come early, they stay late, they have a wonderful time. We tape, generally speaking, it's the second Tuesday of every month. But you can call Little Lanes to find out when we're taping next. When are we taping next? Yeah, Michael? folks, you just missed it. We, uh, we taped, uh, as you watch this, we taped on Tuesday, the 10th of October. Uh, next taping is Tuesday, November 14th, week after the election. Gary Carrington looking for some more bonus money right on the head pin again. Seven pin still stands. He's been putting nine in his marks for the most part. He has one with a seven, one with a ten. A spare inside of a strike. And this will be the miss. So the bonus money streak ends at 50. And he'll take a nine box. Gary Carrington moves over to lane 33 on the left-hand side. Buries the strike. He is on fire here. He's right on the head pin. Every first ball has been absolutely perfect. And except for that last box, when he missed a spare opportunity, he has converted. There's two or three other boxes that could easily have been strikes. John Zappi with back against the wall here in the first string tough shot for John he's got the the two the four the six and the ten very difficult shot takes out the four still leaving the two six and ten and he'll take a nine box for his efforts he is at 88 he'll need a mark to break a hundred we've talked about it so many times in the past Michael how Week to week, game to game, the flow can change so, so quickly. A bowler can be on fire one minute and turn ice cold mm -hmm. the next. He couldn't do anything wrong the last two weeks. Granted, he's not throwing quite as accurately as he was, but getting a lot of punch outs. Now will be a nice spare for John as he took it from the outside, so he'll, be, he'll break 100 in this first string. He's at 98 plus a ball. Gary Carrington has an opportunity to take a real commanding lead in this first string. Well, he's going to put four in the spare and he'll have 102. A 102 first string for John Zappi. Want to welcome a new sponsor to Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV, the Thompson family of dealerships. McMullen Chevrolet, Nashua Hyundai, Nashua Mitsubishi, and Nashua Daewoo, all located in the New England Automotive Village on the Daniel Webster Highway in Nashua. 
we welcome the Thompson family of dealerships to Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Gary Carrington, again, right on the head pin. He got that four pin to dance. It moved over an inch or two, but it's still standing. He's thinking triple strike, which is now at $550. He did win that our first season uh, when he did win the Tournament of Champions as well. Gary missed the spare. Well, he's missed a couple of spares, which could have really led him to a very, very big first string. As it is, he's going to have a big first string. But he's now lost uh, 20 pins just on those two single pin misses, the six pin and what you just saw there. He's at 141. He's going to have around a 150. It could have been a 170 or even better for yep. a string. That time, a little pull on the head pin, but he breaks up the split. And he has the six and the 10 to make for the spare. We'll get to your cards and letters during our second string. Gary will pick up the spare, so he's at 151 plus a ball. This could have been a 180 or a 190 string had Gary made a couple of makeable spares. And for the bowler who has the highest string today, an additional $50 bonus provided by Lita Lanes, part of the new prize structure this year. Gary in the spare. Oh, he threw that one away, missed the head pin, but he still got a seven. So he puts in a 158 first string for Gary Carrington, a big 56 pin lead over John Zappi as we head to string number two of our semifinal match in this first ladder series of our 17th season of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. We're going to come back to Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire in just a minute. Hope you join us. Gary Carrington moving up to lane 34 to begin our second string of our semifinal match of the first ladder series of the new season. Gary with a 158 first string and a commanding 56 pin lead over John Zappi after one. Gary right on the head pin starts the second string the same way he started the first string with a strike. Gary had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven marks in the first string. And he could have had 10. Mm. And think of the bonus money there had he not missed those two single pin spares. He almost backdoored the head pin. Look at this. He still gets a pretty good seven pin drop. Tough shot with a one yeah. three in the seven. There's no wood to help him out. I got to hit the head pin and then take your chances. He's got a shot at it. He went by the seven pin. That, that's exactly where he wanted to hit it too. But the uh, one pin danced right in front of the seven and then back into the pit. Ten box for Gary Carrington. He starts out with 29 through the first couple. If you're in the vicinity of Lita Lanes in Nashua, I'd encourage you to stop by the Pizza Hut right on Amherst Street. Oh, it's about a couple hundred yards from Lita Lanes. Yeah, it, it's in the westbound direction. Just on the opposite side of the street. They have a terrific luncheon buffet every Monday through Friday. And it's all you can eat from 11.30 to 1.00. Includes a salad bar, includes breadsticks, includes several different varieties of pizza. And it's all you care to eat at the Pizza Hut in Nashua on Amherst Street. It's 313 Amherst Street. You can call 889-7710 for more information. But the next time you're in the vicinity of Lita Lane's on Amherst Street in Nashua, stop by the Pizza Hut and enjoy their terrific luncheon buffet from 11.30 to 1, Monday through Friday. I noticed that you uh, enjoyed the salad bar there. Love the Caesar salad. Uh, was it my imagination, or have you uh, lost a few pounds lost over the summer? Lost a few ounces, yeah. Yeah, we're still working on it. And uh, your diet of choice is doing the uh, Atkins uh, no carbohydrate mm. diet. Giving that a shot. I've tried a few others in the past. Yeah. Some have had success. So you, you have can't had. have bread or pasta, right. any kind of starch. Correct. Oh boy, that's tough. No hey. pizza, but you can yeah. have salad. That's the beauty of Pizza Hut. Great salad bar. If you're on the carbo diet or the no carbo diet, like Dick. Zappy with a 19 to start. So Carrington's picked up another 10 pins, leads by 66. So you're losing weight, looking younger. You can buy some gold jewelry, some chains or something. <laughs> have, have something pierced. Yeah, that's, that's just what I need. <laughs> That was one of the few balls that Gary Carrington has thrown that has missed the head pin. He has been all over the head pin. Yeah. He missed it last frame as well. Oh. 
has a nice setup for the 4-7. Gary was the New Hampshire State All Events winner in 2000. He'll be bowling at the Vacation Land Bowling Center in Saco, Maine, coming up in a tournament. In fact, that'll be going on, I think, next weekend. And that features the top bowlers from uh, New Hampshire, Maine, New Brunswick, and Massachusetts in 10 string competition. He's one of the better ones. That's right on the head pin, a little full. He has uh, quite an impressive resume, including five tour wins in 22 years. Now, most pro bowlers might have one or two. He's got five, including one last year. He won a year ago, September of 1999, at Academy Lanes with a 14-33-10 string total, which is an average of 143.3. So the pro tour has been good to Gary, and Gary's been very good for it. And Gary will take a nine box. Got a nice letter, Michael, from Ed Morrison from Rancho Cordova, California. Mm. His dad is living with him now after living in the East and around here and a big Candleton bowling fan. And they got the show taped for him and they send it out to him. And I want to find his name in the letter because they wanted me to say hello to his dad, Frank Morrison. And Frank is, let's see, he's 82 years old. And his son says he loves the show. And he and his mom used to watch the show together. The mom passed away recently in November. And dad lives with him in California. The sister-in-law, Doris, tapes the show every week and then sends it out to California. And so hello to Frank Morrison and thanks for watching. And we wish you the best and many more years of enjoying Candlepin Stars and Strikes via videotape mm. in California. Because you can't play the game out west. You can't play it too many places outside of New England, as you probably know. Zappy needs a break, and he got one on that shot. And he needs a mark here, and he's set up pretty well for his left to right shot. This is one you could make, Michael. And, and a I spare would. for John Zappy in the fourth box as we go to the break. Zappy will be working on a mark when we come back. It's Gary Carrington with the big lead as we hit the halfway point of this semifinal match of our first ladder series. You're watching Candlepin Stars and Strikes as you have been for the past 17 years on WNDS-TV. <laughs> Gary Carrington getting ready to bowl on lane 34. At Lita Lanes in Nashua, Gary leads by 66 pins. John Zappi does have a ball to fill a mark when he next steps to the line. Now, I read that letter from Ed Morrison before the break about his dad, mm -hmm. Frank, living in California. As Gary throws a spread eagle with a piece of wood, and it reminds me that we'd like to hear from all of our viewers from wherever you are, wherever you may be. We'd love to hear from you. And the mailing address is Candleton Stars and Strikes, WNDS-TV. 50 Television Place, Derry, New Hampshire, 03038. I'm going to give you another address in just a second here as Gary Carrington puts a 10 on the board. After every match, we have our bonus ball contest, which gives you at home an opportunity to be part of the action on our Candlepin Stars and Strike show. Our winning bowler will roll a ball. We'll match him up with a postcard from those that have been sent in from home. And Gary Carrington with a nice first ball and a spare opportunity. That pin's not going to take enough of a left-hand turn to get back to that pin. But send in your postcard with your name, address, telephone number, and pick a number from 0 to 10, however many pins you think our winning bowler will knock down with one ball. We'll draw the postcard, and if you're the lucky one, you'll have an opportunity to win the cash prize or a consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And the mailing address for that is Lita Lanes right here in Nashua. It's 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire. And the zip in Nashua. John Zappi with a strike, a well-thrown ball, and that's in a spare. So John responds with a strike, strike inside of a spare. First one of the day, I do believe, for John. Now another opportunity for John. He threw it to the head pin, but he left himself a split. Anyway, finishing the address, it's uh, Lita Lane's 340 Amherst Street, Nashua, New Hampshire, 03063. So send the bonus ball postcards to Lita Lane's in Nashua. Now John trying for another mark. He threw it past the wood. He wanted to try to grab that piece of wood and send it across the lane. 
but he wasn't able to make the shot. He'll probably do it here when it really doesn't count. Nope, he missed the wood anyway. It's a nine box for John Zappi. Talking earlier about uh, Gary Carrington and winning on the WCBC, that's the Pro Bowlers Tour. I want to give you the schedule of tournaments this year. Uh, there's a final shift going on today at Bolarama in Portsmouth for the October tournament. That's Bolarama on Lafayette Avenue in Portsmouth. And uh, for those of you that can't make it or uh, just isn't convenient, uh, Sanford, Maine at the Bolarama on May 4th and 5th, the next Pro Bowler tournament for the WCBC, January 13th and 14th at Mohegan Lanes in Webster, Mass. Feb 12th and 13th right here at Lita Lanes and March 12th and 13th at Lucky Strike in Lynn. Gary Carrington has remote control <laughs> over those pieces of wood rolling on the alley. He stands at the lane, the little gestures joystick. them around, <laughs> yeah. moves them from left to right, yeah. and they follow. That's they follow a, his motion. It's like a video game, you're right. Well, he had a bit of a dry spell from the second through the fifth frames, but he's back on track now with back-to-back uh, -back spares. Now looking for bonus money. With two marks in a row, he has $50 in the bank in bonus money in this match already. Looking for more. Bounces it down a little bit. Picks up the head pin head on. It's almost the spread eagle. The 10 pin is gone. You've got three on the left, the two, the four, and the seven. The three and the six on the right. Will Gary spin it around? He almost did. And that will be a nine box for Gary Carrington. Good chance for John Zappi now to pick up some much needed territory. John needs a couple of marks in a row. He's got, yep. uh, he's up against a mark in this frame. But only a five fill, so a mark in a good fill would be a big help. Well, that's a mark opportunity right there. Yeah, you can write that one down. That's another one of those shots that looks like you could make, Mike. Maybe. If you kept the ball on the alley. No comment. And that's going to be a spare for John Zappi. Steve Platt is atop the first ladder, and he'll take on the winner of today's match for that $1,000 first prize and a seed in the Tournament of Champions, which comes up next spring. John grabbed the head pin going by, leaves a tough shot. He made this last week, the 2, 4, 5, and 7. And he made it again. Well done. Nice shot by John Zappi. An opportunity to gain some ground on Gary Carrington. A lot of ground needs to be gained. But it is a start. Gary Carrington leveling off and John Zappi now going into acceleration mode. So the two may pass each other if this rate continues. Carrington on the head pin. Look Ouch. what he gets for his efforts. The 5'10". Not a favorite of our bowlers. So it's the 10 pin all by itself in the corner to complete the frame for Gary Carrington. And a nine box for Gary. Got a note from Severio Orlando. Big fan of the show, and he lists a bunch of bowlers that he really likes, Michael. Jeff Atkins, Paul Berger, Gary Carrington, the Morgan brothers, Tim Lipke, Steve Plant, Gary Carrington, as I mentioned earlier, finishing out you with a grand style. No, I just <laughs> mentioned him looking oh. up. You know, the Morgan brothers, speaking of Tommy and Mike, they finished, I think, seventh and eighth in the, uh, the roll-off, so they were both very close to making the show. Maybe we'll see them next month. Carrington on the strike. Puts it right through, but he's got another ball to fill. He's at 124. <laughs> 126 for Gary Carrington in the second string to go with a 158. And a two-string total of 284. John Zappi. Needs to finish strong in this second string. He's working on two marks in a row. This is a bonus money box for John Zappi. Right in the head pin. The five pin kicked out, but the ten pin still stands. He's chipping away here, frame by frame. Very makeable spare. As he'll go cross lane from left to right. He's going to get it. 
That's three marks in a row. That's $50 for John Zappi. That's a nice uh, hand from Gary Carrington. These bowlers all very supportive of one another, even though they're bowling against each other as enemies. They still support each other. Now he's up against a Carrington strike in the 10th frame, so he needs a mark here to maintain that momentum. Missed the head pin. He only puts five in the spare. And he leaves himself an awful shot. The one, the three, the four, seven, and eight. Finishes with an eight box and a 133 for John Zappi in the second string. So we're looking at a 49 pin lead for Gary Carrington over John Zappi as we head to the third and final string of this semifinal match. The winner of the match gets Steve Plant next week, and you'll get to watch it on Candlepin Stars and Strikes at Leader Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire on WNDS TV. John Zappi trails by 49 pins as we start the third string, 284 to 235 to Gary Carrington, and Zappi will be first to bowl. He was the fourth seed in this latter series. Gary Carrington seeded second. Top seed Steve Plant waits in the wings to take on the winner of this match. And Zappi has some bowling to do to get back into it. Steve Platt, an incredible 740 for five strings in the qualifying. Everybody else was wi within nine pins of each other. Gary Carrington at 661, all the way down to Rich Lottie at 652, and Whitcomb and Zappi in between. Don't know how John Zappi could have done anything more with that second shot and not make the spare. He threw a perfect ball and was denied. I guess in that case it wasn't perfect because he didn't make the shot, but it sure looked perfect to me. Now he throws a ball, leaves him the 7-10 with wood all over the deck. I'm yeah. not sure what to do in this one, Michael. Throw it down the middle of the I would lane say and so. just take a shot. I think so. I mean, you got enough wood there that something's bound to ha hit something. And you, plus, you got the ball working Right for you down too. the middle, there it goes. Oh, man. Took out the 7 pin in the corner and left the 10 pin in the right corner. No way to predict. Well, she went down there with a compass. <laughs> Would you say that's one of the attractions of this game, though, is Absolutely. unpredictability? Absolutely. Whereas in 10-pin, you never have to deal with that element or that factor. Gary Carrington, third string, missed the head pin. You can see him raise his arm. As soon as the ball leaves his hands, when Gary throws one he doesn't like, he lets everybody know. His arms go right into the air. That's almost a spare. He threw a perfect ball there on the outside of the headpin, which is what you like to do in a situation like that. And he didn't pick up the spare. He'll clean up that last pin for a 10. I want to give the email address for the Candlepin Bowling Tour, WCBC. They've now got their own website. Well, they're working on it. As of this date, I don't know if it's up and running. But uh, when it is, it's www.candlepinprotour.org. Candlepinprotour.org. You can try it out now, see if it's working. As of uh, early September, it was still under construction. It'll be a way to find out more about the tournaments, the scheduling, and how to become a part of the WCBC, the World Candlepin Bowlers Congress. President Paul Wambach, Dave Richards, who is here today with his friend Gary Carrington, is uh, vice president. Marianne Kelly, treasurer, and uh, Dottie Lawrick is the tournament coordinator. All doing a fabulous job. Gary Carrington looks for the spear. Doesn't get it, at least yet. Pin's still rolling, but won't get there. Joe Lestavich from Milbury, Massachusetts, sends in a note. As Gary picks up a 10. Both bowlers with 10s in their first couple of boxes. You've heard me mention over the past couple of years that I'm from Worcester originally. Did I ever tell you I was from Worcester? <laughs> you put Worcester back on the map, Dick. And uh, he writes a note, gentlemen, I've watched your show for a long time. Keep up the good work. He asked for alleys in Worcester. I think I got them all, plus a few in neighboring towns. And here's the list of them all, oh. Michael. There are a bunch. 
And there's what, two or three left today? One in town as far as I know. Look at this shot by John Zappi as he almost pulled off a miracle shot. Take a nine box. King Philip Ideal Recreation, Bowling Green on Grafton Street, Bowling Green on Central Street, Bay State Strand, Regent Federal Casino, Washington Square, 20th Century, Wellington, Webster Square, Metro, WAC, which I don't remember, Central, Mount Carmel, Colonial still going on, Auburn Alley is in the Worcester line, and let's see, then there's uh, Milbury in North Grafton, and Lincoln Park Lanes and White City Lane. There were, Lincoln Park was 10 pin. How many of those places? Town and Country on Route 9 in Shrewsbury yeah. was half 10-pin, right. half candle-pin for a I, while. I think I'm it's sure. all 10-pin now. Uh. How many of those places did you bowl at back in your a few younger days? A few. I could tell you a few that, that I, uh, that I uh, hit. Recreation, Bowling Green, Strand. I think I was at the casino once, 20th Century for sure. Metro Bowls where I first started bowling on... Park Avenue. It's a Chinese restaurant now, I think. Oh. Carrington's got Central. the uh, 4 7 10 plus some wood over there on the left hand side. I think he'll go right up the middle and hope for a ball deflection to take out the 10 and the pins to take out the 4 and the 7. We'll see. The Central Bowling Alley in Worcester. There's a shot, and he, he played it, but he didn't get it. You now, time is a wasting for John Zappi, who was up against three Gary Carrington non-marked frames, but could capitalize. Three tens now for Babe Carrington of Plastow, New Hampshire. Central Bowling Alleys in Worcester was the home of, a great, of one of the great bowlers in the city, a, a real personality. His name was Ray Chin, and he was a, one of the great bowlers in Central Massachusetts for many years. What other uh, famous celebrities are from Worcester? Is Jackie Robinson from Worcester? No. S somewhere in the East. Any other celebrities besides yourself? Oh, there are many. Where do I begin? Gary Carrington talking to the crowd, getting some, getting some tips, some advice on how to play this shot. Did they give him the right answer? <laughs> they almost, almost. did. <laughs> Gary's smiling back at the crowd. Well, barring a collapse, he's got this game and this match pretty much in hand. Not this game, but this three-game set. And he's pretty loose out there right now. And another 10 box. Four 10 boxes for Gary in the third string. Neither bowler is marked in the third string. Gary Carrington with a commanding 51-pin lead with six boxes remaining in the semifinal match. We'll go to the break, and we'll come back with the home stretch of this semifinal match of Candlepin Stars and Strikes from Lita Lanes in Nashua. You're watching WNDS-TV. He steps to lane 34. Six boxes remain. John trailing by 51 pins. That's a pretty good way to start the comeback. Yeah, it didn't he, take long for those pins to go down. He has to take it off the sheet. <coughs> Excuse me. An expression meaning you've got to get marks all the way down. got away from him but working on a strike it gives him one more ball and an opportunity to do some damage the wood will help him he puts eight in the strike and a nine box nines won't do it John needs marks Gary Carrington has not left a pin on the deck here in the third string, but he doesn't have a mark. He's just got all tens. On the head pin, but not much to show for it. 1993-94 was a very good year for Gary Carrington. He was the WCBC Pro Bowler of the Year and set some records that year. He still holds records for best 25 strings and best 30 strings, all done in 1993-94 when he had the best total pinfall, and that's how they determined the WCBC Pro Bowler of the Year. 
Gary will be open again. Good chance for another 10 box. And that is what it'll be. Five straight 10s for Gary Carrington. Steve Badney was the Pro Bowler of the Year last year, for those that maybe didn't hear. A frequent uh, player on our show. Gary with a spare opportunity here. The three and the six are in the way of a mark. He will not get the spare. That's because he wanted to keep the ten string going. And he picked the six off and left the three standing. And the sixth straight ten box for Gary Carrington. It's a 44-pin lead for Carrington with four boxes remaining. So with no marks for Carrington, Zappi's only gotten five pins back in the last six frames. The opportunity's been there. Boy, it has. But that was right on the nose that's that That's how it's been going today for John. Head pin hits that maybe would have been broken up last week are staying as punch outs this week. John will be open in the seventh frame. High score today so far, 158 for Gary Carrington, which will entitle him to uh, extra $50 if that holds up here at the end of the match. I suspect it might. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that's a very good guess. It's extra bonus money this season from Lita Lanes. That one got away from him, but he salvaged a pretty good situation with some deadwood that will help him out. You've got the one, the three, the eight, and the ten. The wood is helpful, and it takes it out. Good spare for John Zappi. John needs to strike the rest of the way out. He needs to win $500 and some in order to have a shot at it. Here's Gary Carrington now with six tens in the third string. Missed the head pin. Yeah, held it just a shade too long. Went too far to the left. The one, seven, eight, and ten with some wood just to the left of the one pin. Hey! Oh, he's staring another ten right mm -hmm. in the face. I've never seen an all ten game. No. Should be an extra prize for that. <laughs> it really should be. Let me go get Ray and see if he's feeling generous this afternoon. I guess we should push it. He's come up with some extra dough this year for the bowlers. Well, I think the streak will come to an end. This I'm is a I'm not sure. The shot. wood is tough. No, it isn't good wood, but uh, if it's the wood gonna... moves. Yeah. No, look at Gary try to get that wood to move. The wood is not good. This could be another 10 bucks. Unless he's going to have to try to cap the wood. That's what he's trying to do. You know, he's going right out the pin, and he got it on Look the right side. That. Great shot by Gary Carrington. He didn't have much room to shoot at that pin, and he managed to pick it. Great shooting. It spoils the perfect 10 game. But I think it just about slams the door. I think for a perfect 10 game, the award should be uh, a weekend with Bo Derrick. <laughs> you think? John Zappi breaks up the split, puts eight in his spare. <laughs> Threw it away. All academic at this point. Gary Carrington will be flirting with a 400 triple. 10 box for John Zappi, he's at 102. Well, Gary needs 116. Very doable for the 400 triple. We've seen that a lot today in the last couple of weeks, the two, four, six, and ten. John not able to convert it. He is at 109. 111 for John Zappi and a three string total of 346. So John's run will come to an end this afternoon. 
but a nice three-week run it was. A 400, 393, and in a losing effort today, 346, as Gary Carrington pushes toward 400 and a victory. <laughs> Gary puts seven in the spare and leaves himself a pretty good spare leave with the wood behind. And that will do it. Two marks in a row for Gary Carrington, so he'll try to finish with some bonus money. And a 400 triple. So he doesn't even need a mark, but he needs a good fill here, and then a 10 box for 400. He missed the head pin, so he's going to need a mark. Yep. So both bowlers with $50 in bonus money today. Carrington gets another 50 for his high single of 156. Gary will fall yeah. short of 400. He's at 106. 107 for Gary Carrington. And a three string total of 391. A 391 to 346 win for Gary Carrington over John Zappi. And we'll come back to meet our bowlers and look ahead to next week when we return to Lita Lanes in Nashua for the wrap-up of this week's edition of Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Don't go away. <laughs> Gary Carrington beats John Zappi, 391 to 346. John Zappi here with me as we're running a little bit out of time. Check for $300. We've got $50 in bonus money and our best wishes to you, John. Thanks very much. Thank nice to see you. Hope John, to see you again you soon. Luck. John Zappi, the runner-up. Now Gary Carrington will bowl a ball for our bonus ball contest. We'll try to match him up with a winner at home. It looks like it'll be a six. Mike Morin reaches into the bucket. And let's see what Mike draws out of there. And it is... James Johnson from Lynn, Massachusetts. And don't you know it, when Gary rolls a six, he picks seven. We've got another <laughs> consolation prize from NNR Trophies in Winchenden, Massachusetts. And Gary